Welcome to Health Matters. I'm your host, Dr. Lana Marconi. On today's show, we're going to look at mental health and explore the landscape of psychology, and then we're going to shift into energy healing. Uh, first, please welcome the president of the Ontario Psychological Association, the lovely Dr. Jane Story. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for coming back. Oh, I'm happy to be here. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. You're full of a wealth of information all the time. Oh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so lots on the table for you tonight. Lots of questions for you. Okay. Um, the Ontario Psychological Association, OPA, what is it? Okay, so OPA was established in 1947, so okay. we have a long oh. history, and it's the Volunteer Professional Association uh, representing psychology in the province, and um, it's made up, our members are uh, clinicians and uh, researchers and academics and students, and so what our focus is on um, is, is caring about and advocating for the mental uh, uh, and psychological well-being of the people who live in Ontario. And we want to do that through uh, championing uh, good science, best clinical practice, mm -hmm. and, and uh, education. Uh, mental health is a huge, huge issue. Mm -hmm. uh, stats shows that uh, every year one in five people suffer from mental illness. Every week, 500,000 Canadians can't work because of a mental health uh, mm -hmm. issue. 11,000 people um, commit suicide mm -hmm. a year and uh, it's the second leading cause of uh, disability. Right, in and then some statistics are showing that it's more of an issue uh, than uh, cancers in, in some it is, areas. Yeah. And the expectation yeah. is this is going to become a bigger and bigger problem yeah. as time goes by. And economically, uh, stats were showing yeah, it costs the uh, economy over $51 billion a it's year. It's huge. A year? It's huge. Yes, yeah, so it, it's certainly a concern, yeah. and it's something that we need to 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 really look at uh, being creative and thinking outside the box, and, and and coming up with ways to address it before yeah. the situation gets even worse. So here's an issue I have: mental health is on the rise. Um, people are highly medicated. What's going on? Well, I, I think there's a, a couple of things to okay. attribute that to. So, um, if if we want to look at um, society. Uh, issues. Yeah. So we have uh, people who are becoming uh, stressed at much younger ages. We live in a 24-7 uh, world now and uh, bad news travels at the speed of sound. We have uh, kids that may be relatively ill-prepared to, to face the world. They don't turn off the way that the people in my generation uh, might have done it. Um, we know that a lot of uh, psychological conditions mm -hmm. uh, emerge during childhood so uh, but I think that we also have um, people becoming uh, more comfortable with saying that they have uh, mental health issues and uh, more comfortable seeking help for those and that's uh, probably a byproduct of the campaigns that have been going on to try to reduce stigma mm -hmm. so um, I think again that there's a whole bunch of different uh, contributors to why this is becoming more of an issue uh, but certainly we know that the numbers are, are pretty impressive and and we also know that there are a lot of gaps in the mental health system. Sure, let's talk about those gaps for a minute. And with kids, okay, so there's a mm -hmm. newspaper article that came out. 1.2 million kids in Canada have a mental health issue, but only 25% are getting help. Suicide is the leading cause of non-accidental death in mm. teens, and they're contributing this to the two-tier system. Jane, <laughs> president, yes, yes. explain. Okay, so so um, in um, in Ontario right now, there is one uh, provider of mental health services mm -hmm. that is covered by OHIP, and that is medical doctors, um, psychiatrists, and we also have other folks within the mental health care system. So there are psychologists and social workers and psychotherapists and and psychological associates, and uh, all of those folks are not covered by OHIP, mm -hmm. and so. So there are issues around access for mm -hmm. people who can't afford to pay out of pocket or who perhaps don't have extended health benefits and, and whether or not they're able to uh, you know, be able to, to to access the services they need when they need them. Mm -hmm. Because of such a few number of healthcare providers covered by OHIP, there are really, really long waits. In some uh, cities in the province, people can wait up to two years to see a psychiatrist. Wow. And so during that time, um, people are deteriorating. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you can imagine, you already have some issues and you're waiting and waiting to, to be seen and to be diagnosed. Mm -hmm. And so what we're getting is we're getting folks 
folks that um, have deteriorated such that they, they can't wait th those two years to be seen or, or uh, a year in some communities. And what they're doing is they're, they're having to go to after hours clinics or to the hospital emergency room in order to seek help that way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that too, this is a problem that the issues around um, a, a shortage of psychiatrists in the province, mm -hmm. uh, that's something that we're going to have to live with for quite some time because mm -hmm. if we look at medical st uh, school statistics, we learn that fewer and fewer medical students are choosing psychiatry as a specialization. So this isn't a problem that's going to go away. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's something that we really need to look at and try to make sure that people are getting help. Mm -hmm. in, in terms of, um, <clears throat> do you want OHIP to cover psychologists? Well, it, it's an interesting question yeah. because I don't know whether that will ever end up on the table. Mm -hmm. um, psychologists have never been covered by OHIP. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that um, most of us started work, uh, most of us who are clinicians started work within the hospital system and so our services there were under OHIP. Mm -hmm. um, but when there was some uh, austerity measures in, yeah. the, in, the, in the 1990s, a lot of the hospital psychologists psychology departments closed and we were kind of, you know, all sort of thrown into uh, community-based private practice. So, you know, now we've been practicing that way for quite some time and I think that um, it would be interesting to, you know, for us to consider being under a, a system that has, you know, challenges around administration and, sure. and, and, you know, what's covered and what's not covered, where oh, yeah. we have a certain freedom to do the, the kinds of, of treatment we want. But I think that that the, the bigger issue is is mm -hmm. that governments have told us for for years now that there's just simply not enough money See, within the system. See, that's what I don't believe because I'm reading the newspaper one day and f you know Pfizer, the huge pharmaceutical giant, is getting 2.7 million dollars to expand their warehouse. Like, really, do we really need to expand their warehouse? Well, and, and, and you know, what? I can believe that there's I can believe that on paper yeah. th there's not piles of money sitting around not being used mm -hmm. in the healthcare system. However, yeah. I think that money could certainly be reallocated within the system. Yeah. Um, so for example, if we made it uh, easier for people to access psychologists, and there's there's a lot of us, so that would really help with the waiting list. Um, if we made it easier to access psychologists, then we are going to stop the reliance of, of people on mm -hmm. the emergency room. Yep. J so even that alone That's, would make a difference. Yeah, Jane, just hold that thought, please. We're gonna go to a quick break. We'll be back more with Dr. Jane Story, the president of the Ontario Psychological Association, come on back. Welcome back to Health Matters. I'm sitting with Dr. Jane Story. She's the president of the Ontario Psychology Association, and we're talking about mental health and the landscape of psychology in today's changing times. So access to a psychologist today, what does that look like? So right now, anyone mm -hmm. can um, make a, a referral to a psychologist. You don't require a medical doctor's referral. You mm -hmm. can just call one of us up. Um, I think that we, there's lots of issues around access. We talked a little bit about funding, mm -hmm. so people needing to pay out of pocket or having extended health. But also, you know, there's a shortage of psychologists in certain um, arenas sure. that might make a difference. So, for example, within the school system, mm -hmm. um, we know that um, it, w within the school system, it's important to catch, to identify learning disabilities, for example. Sure. And so there is a specialty in psychology, school psychologists. Mm -hmm. And um, they're within the school system, but sometimes the waiting lists get really long. If you can appreciate how many people would like to have their children tested or how many mm -hmm. teachers you know, are concerned about, about someone's performance. Um, and so as a result of that, there simply aren't enough mm -hmm. uh, school psychologists within the system. Um, and uh, people do have, uh, you know, an opportunity to have their child assessed outside of the school system by community-based mm -hmm. pediatric neuropsychologists or clinical child psychologists, but that takes us back to the whole uh, money issue sure. and, and uh, affordability. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also, you know, like to see more psychologists within the hospital system because... What happened with that? Because at one point, psychology departments existed in hospitals, and I guess there was a downgrade, and th yeah, they're not there, there anymore. Yeah, there used to be some really large and, and robust psychology departments in mm -hmm. hospitals, and back then it was a whole different era. Talk about collaborative practice. Yeah. Psychologists and MDs and nursing all working together mm -hmm. um, with the same patients. And, and again, in the 1990s, there were some austerity measures put in place, and, mm -hmm. and funding cutbacks resulted in a large majority of the hospitals 
cutting mm -hmm. their psychology departments. And what's interesting is, is you know, I, I live in Burlington, and um, we've had the we have one hospital in Burlington, and in the entire uh, you know history of that hospital, there's never been psychology. And and so in some cases, communities have never had a hospital-based psychologist, and in others. The large psychology departments were, you know, were, were completely shut down, and that's how mm -hmm. most of us ended up in private practice in the first place. I see. Okay. So in my generation, we were largely clinicians, were largely mm -hmm. uh, trained with a view towards working within the hospital system, mm -hmm. and, and at that point, we could be accessed under OHIP. Mm -hmm. Well, now, I mean, I was reading on OPA's website that you guys had advocacy success in terms of uh, extended health care benefits for mm -hmm. people who are retired. Um, mm -hmm. it went up from 1,000 to 2,000. Right, so a lot of extended health benefits mm -hmm. uh, cover psychology, but you know insufficiently. Sure. So there are some plans that cover fifty dollars a session, and, and sessions cost a little more than that. Mm -hmm. um, but we've still others where they cap, you know, X number of dollars annually. And what some companies are recognizing is that it, it, it will take a little more to make sure people get not only the treatment that they need, but to be properly assessed and diagnosed. And they're increasing the amount of funding available. Right. That's good. And you got your scope of practice may uh, increase to include prescriptive medication. Well, one or of is the that on the table at Queen's Park? It, we sub made a submission to the Minister of Health back in November 2012, and mm -hmm. since then we've been we've been waiting to hear. Things sometimes move pretty slowly. Mm -hmm. It's been a minority government. Mm -hmm. There's been an election looming, and mm -hmm. we're now in the yeah. in the middle of it. What psychologists want to do is address things like access issues mm -hmm. and, and other things like perhaps over medication mm -hmm. of certain um, psychological well, impairments by having the yeah. right to to prescribe prescribe mm -hmm. psychotropic medications mm -hmm. um, and so and, and we we want to do this for a, a, a number of reasons we think that we're incredibly uh, well trained and educated mm -hmm. um, and that we were you know in a, in a, we're ready to do this this is something that we do um, a little bit now with respect to collaborating with family physicians family physicians um, are doing the diagnosis and assessment and treatment of 80 percent of mental health conditions but if family Family physician may have little to no expertise in either psychology in or sure. psychopharmacology, mm -hmm. and we've got lots of great collaborations going on with family physicians mm -hmm. in our communities because we're helping guide them um, and, and answering questions for them with respect to appropriate meds, appropriate doses, and so now what we'd like to do is is, is get into uh, being able to prescribe, but more importantly, what we want to do is be able to. Well, let's call it unprescribe. We want to be able to take mm. people off medication, yeah. particularly when they're suffering from conditions that the research shows mm -hmm. is uh, more efficiently treated with psychotherapy mm -hmm. than pharmacology mm -hmm. uh, or pharmacotherapy. Um, and we we also think that uh, sometimes people are, are over medicated with risk with respect to dosage, we think it's important to not put someone, for example, with a brain injury or a dementia mm -hmm. on a medication that is sedating, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we would really want to look at having um, the power to prescribe, uh, giving us the power to unprescribe. Yeah, and I applaud that effort because, I mean, just looking in the newspaper articles in Manitoba, what happened with them. Um, the Prozac defense, 2009, mm -hmm. that young boy who stabbed his friend under the influence of Prozac and the judge agreed it was because his violent behavior was due to the medication and the child turned around and sued his uh, psychiatrist, the doctors who had prescribed the medication. Well, and I think that you were looking at, um, if you look at the numbers, and I'm sure you did in preparing for this, but the a number of people who are on antidepressant medication is mind-blowing. Yeah. Um, the number of children who've been diagnosed with ADHD and who are being medicated, I mean, when I was a kid and I was in school, they would say things like Jane's hyperactive and mm -hmm. Jane talks too much but we won't go there but the Jane, Jane's hyperactive nobody medicated me no one treated mm -hmm. me like that was a psychological impairment mm -hmm. or, or, or an issue around learning um, that was just who I was and, and I think I turned out okay I think that we have a concern now that you know ADHD is something bad and we fix it we fix that through medication but do all of these people who are on medication need to be? And the same and thing with long? depression. Jane, one of my clients I have came to me to quit smoking. She said she's been on antidepressants for 25 years. 25, she's no better. She cries at the drop of a pin. Her bones have deteriorated. She has to take injections for her bones. And the doctors have told her she cannot get off the medication now because it's been too long in her system. 
Well, that's a that's sort of an interesting thing to say. Yeah, um, that's what I said when I, I heard it, that. You pretty much can get off the of medication, <laughs> but you have to do it quite uh, slowly. the 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 new mm. The new generation antidepressants are really a gift for some people. There are certain people who have not responded well to alternative therapy, and they those folks need meds. Mm. I just think we need to be careful about who needs them and who doesn't. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. And um, just a quick, uh, quick thing, Form 1? Yes. So I don't know if people realize this, but psychologists can't uh, complete the form that allows people, someone who is a danger to themselves or others Thank to be so taken much. to the Jane, hospital. Thank you so much. Go on the Canadian Psychological Association's website and get their e-advocacy campaign and write into your representative how important mental health is. Come on back. We'll be back with Energy Healing. Did you know that fatty fish like salmon, herring, sardines, and halibut are an excellent source of healthy fat, namely omega-3 fatty acids? These protect against heart disease. Two servings of fatty fish a week can lower your chance of dying from heart disease.